Hello, welcome back to the James Ramble New Views for yet another episode. And if you saw the community tab post, I'm going to be talking about Shazam 2, Shazam, the Fury of the Gods, whatever. But before I get into that sort of thing, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on Shazam, the first movie, to give a bit of context and slightly a bit about the DC, f- my relationship with the DC movies, because this is a DC film. So the first Shazam movie, I only got around to it recently, and I think it's a great movie. It has good comedy it has a simple story it's just trying to be this it's trying to be as simple as it can it's not trying to be bigger than it actually is it's you know it's this guy who gets mm, these powers off of this wizard and then he holds on to this staff and then when he and he says shazam and then turns into shazam and he's a, a much older guy but his name is billy batson and he's a younger kid and then he turns into that so then he's an adult and he has these kidly antics and does all these kidly things. And the DC movies, right, I saw Black Adam and I thought it was the most amazing thing in the world. And I look back on it and I'm like, nah, it's not as, it's not like mind blowing. I had a good time with it, yes, but I don't remember th- met lot. I don't remember a lot about it. And it was only like five months ago that I watched it. And I've had a mixed r- bag with the DC m- movies. Like some of them I've liked and some of them I haven't liked. So I that stuff out of the way. Right, okay, so Shazam, the Fury of the Gods, right, it came out, it came out like a month ago, and I watched it in HD, and so the movie is about Shazam, it continues the story, and it continues seeing his Shazam and his family, you get to see all that stuff, but then he has to go up against these three, the three daughters of Atlas, and they, they're all like different ages, and that's kind of what the movie's about. They're trying to fight that, and it's trying to wreak, continue, continuously connect with the family, all of that stuff. And and that's kind of the movie itself. My thoughts on the movie is that right. I think I did. I think I had I had a good time. And there's a lot of humour that carries over from the first movie, and it just it, it's just as good as it was in the first movie. In my opinion, though, I feel like. The villain aspect of the movie, like, I like one of the uh, the girls, but it's weird because the three sis- daughters of Atlas, one of them sides with Shazam and his family, the other two are just trying to defeat Shazam and stuff like that. So it was a bit weird seeing that, and they didn't really explain their ages right. They didn't really explain the age difference, because the youngest later on in the movie says, oh, by the way, I'm 6,000 years old, and there's these many things they don't really explain. There's also the stuff with unicorns, and the unicorn is fed Skittles by one of the one someone in Shazam's family. So there's all of these things that don't really make sense. But it's an entertaining film with a lot of humour in it, and I think Zachary Levi does does a very good job at being Shazam. Like he's perfect for this role. What I think the movie should have done more though is kind of give us that contrast between Billy Batson and Shazam, because this movie was just Shazam the whole time. There was like five, six minutes of screen time for the actual, for Billy Batson, the other actor. So we didn't get that balance that we saw in that first film. So I think that there wasn't very good. And the movie, right, Shazam was this simple, simple story. You saw how that go around. But then when you get to this movie, like, like, you have this giant dragon battle, and it feels like it just turns into the most generic superhero movie ever. Like, it turned into the 20 other superhero movies you've already seen before. So the interesting aspect of trying to do something a bit light-hearted, something a little bit different, compared to, like, you know, the dark, really dark themes of Man of Steel and the really dark themes of the Snyder Cut. When we get to Shazam 2, it just it just kind of tries to be big and bold and not trying to be a small-scale story, which is kind of what Ant-Man 3 did. It, it was this, like, this small ant-sized story, but then we have this giant looming threat of Kang and trying to do that, Except, though, I feel like the humour in Shazam, Fury of the Gods, works so much better, so much better in in Shazam, Fury of the Gods, compared to Ant-Man 3, because Ant-Man 3 had all these random statements about, I'm Darren and I'm not a dick, but this movie, because it's an over-the-top comic book 
character we're focusing on here and they've found a way to sort of make it funny. And in the first film, there's like there's a good example of how Shazam is fighting this guy. He says, oh, I can't hear you, saying all this stuff. And it's like this interesting little humour that they have because he doesn't hear him and he's far away. It's an interesting detail. And, and there's humour that makes it stand out compared to some other films I've seen that just that just take some cringe dialogue and think, laugh, 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 laugh. And so that's what Shazam uses to it, its advantage, is the humour aspect. There is like the do the giant spectacle and the giant action and the and all the creature things from the first and second movie kind of ch- turn the tone a bit, but because we're dealing with this over the top comic book character, you can definitely see that it, it intermingles and it doesn't feel out of place. And the director of this movie and the first movie is big into his horror. And so because of that, you see him, you know, translating the stuff he likes a bit horror into this film. So that's why I do think the movie works for that. So, overall, I would give Shazam, Fury of the Gods, like a a 6 or 7 out of 10. The plot, if you think about the plot way too much, it does feel like a downgrade and, ah... Just an inferior product compared to the first movie. But over it's not a bad film. Like it's not offensively bad. It's not like you're gonna be like, oh my god, this is a freaking disaster that I'm never gonna watch ever again. Ah But it's like it's fine for what it is, it does what it needs to do, but it just it just has things about it that make it inferior to the first movie. And I don't know how I do not know how like relevant it's going to be for the future of the DCEU because of James Gunn's new plan for the DCU and the, the DCEU and the post credit scene and they brought in like Wonder Woman as well like and this movie didn't do so well at the box office and there was a bad Rotten Tomato score but all of that stuff like it flopped down the box office it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter in terms of like how how good a film is because it's not that bad like. A film is not determined by the box office numbers, it's determined by how you how you enjoy it and the quality of the writing and stuff like that. So, uh, overall, yeah, good film. Just try to nail down, get straight to the point with this one. So, we'll see you next week for another review. I might see the Mario film, who knows, I might see Pope's Exorcist, who knows what will happen. So, see you for another review on the James Ramblin' Reviews. Bye. Bye. Please, oh no.